Hello, Calco students and seekers of truth. In this lesson, we continue our study of integration by parts. And I'm going to show you kind of a unique example here with the product of e to the x and cosine of x. And again, I've given you the, uh, I've written here the formula for integration by parts. And there's some things that we should notice here. We should point out in this, ex in this antiderivative is that the cosine function, uh, remember, the cosine, just like the sine function, is cyclical. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. The derivative of negative cosine is positive sine. And the, po the derivative of positive sine is cosine again. So if you take cosine or sine or any of these four functions here and you take the derivative repeatedly, eventually you get back to itself. Now e to the x is even more special. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we can look at this with cosine as having a, a cycle of four and e to the x as having a cycle of one. Okay. And that's helpful to point out because it helps, it, it actually basically, it says here that, or it helps us to see that it doesn't really matter which you choose for G and which you choose for, for F or F and G prime. Um, you can end up going in kind of a loop anyways. Now, I like to take the derivative of cosine rather than taking the antiderivative of cosine. So I'm going to call this part here F. And then I'm going to use e to the x. I'm going to call that g prime. Okay, so I'll write on my notes here. Uh, f prime is equal to negative sine, and g wonderfully the antiderivative of e to the x is just itself. Okay, so let's start getting into the work here. The antiderivative of e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to f times g, so f is cosine, times g, g is e to the x, uh, minus the antiderivative of f prime, which is negative sine, times g, which is e to the x, dx. And now you can see here that we're going to have to continue uh, with our integration by parts, this is gonna this integral right here is going to require us um, to use integration by part again. To simplify things just a little bit, I have a minus negative sign, so I can change this to a plus. Right, a, a negative times a negative is just a positive. So I'll rewrite the statement. This is equal to cosine of x e to the x plus right, the result of this integral here. And again, I'm going to use g here for, at, for e to the x. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to use g prime here for e to the x. And I'm going to use f for sine. So this, the antiderivative of sine e to the x is equal to f, which is sine of x, times g, which is e to the x. Uh, I should make a note here. Using in this next round, uh, f prime, the derivative of sine is going to be cosine. And the antiderivative of e to the x still is always e to the x. Okay, so this is f times g minus the antiderivative of f prime, which is cosine, times e to the x, dx. And if I were to, now, if I were to try and solve this uh, antiderivative here, cosine of x e to the x, I would get back to this. I would get back to the original problem. It's going to become cyclical, right? It's going to become um, kind of like an infinite loop where in order to solve the original problem, I have to solve the original problem. And it would seem that we, we would be stuck and we would be unable to do anything. But if you notice here, um, 
by having this expression in our answer with the negative sign, it actually makes the answer simpler and possible for us to solve. So here's how we're going to do it. So we're going to take this expression and add it to both sides. You know, notice what I circled here in green and the left side of the equal sign, that's the same thing. It's, it's a like term. So we're going to add those two together and we're going to get the result 2 times the, definite, the indefinite integral e to the x cosine x dx is equal to cosine x e to the x plus sine x e to the x and then divide both sides by 2. Right, the antiderivative of e to the x cosine x is equal to cosine x e to the x plus let me clean this up e to the e to the x plus sine of x e to the x all of that divided by ooh, that's messy all of that divided by 2 plus a constant. Okay? So by creating the problem, the negative version of the problem in our solution, we rearrange that, do a little bit of algebra, and we get to our answer. Um, and as you see here, we may be able to do some factoring. Right? You may see this answer as e to the x over 2 times cosine plus sine. plus a constant. So um, either version of the answer is, of course, correct. I'm just showing you what you may see. Uh, you may have to simplify this. You may have to recognize this if you are taking some sort of standardized test. All right, so there you have it, the full lesson here on integration by parts. I've shown you some, some introduction and some examples, a couple of different types of examples. And what's really key about integration by parts or all integration problems is that you have to practice. You have to kind of look through these problems, work through them, stumble a little bit, retrace your steps before you get the hang of like, what different integration methods do I try, which ones are most fruitful, most helpful. As always, thank you for watching. Keep working hard and ask questions if you need it and have a wonderful day.